Number 10, Ray Romano. While listening to Ray Romano's voice for hours on end may be one of the harshest punishments ever conceived. Seriously, I wouldn't want to do that. What I was actually referring to was his portrayal of the woolly mammoth in Ice Age. Yes, the large tusk beast of the Forgotten Era. They were tough, and if Cross would surely spell the end of any Neanderthal brave enough to face one alone, which I'm sure at some point was. Cause trouble in the tribe? Well, then you have to bring us dinner, and we're hungry, so please go single-handedly and hunt and bring back a woolly mammoth. I couldn't even imagine. Unfortunately for those Neanderthals, this isn't Star Wars, and they weren't Boba Fett. Bringing back the head of a beast single-handed wasn't going to happen. They were most likely going to get trampled and left for archaeologists left to find thousands of years later. Yeah, no thanks. Number 9. Cliff While the Neanderthals might not have been as smart as their Homo sapien counterparts, they were not exactly idiots. You find a high enough cliff, and you push said banished member off the cliff. It's simple but effective. There's a good chance that whomever gets pushed off said Cliff will not cause trouble for the tribe any longer. This is something that many civilizations would do for many years. The Greeks, the Romans, just about everyone really. You can't blame them either. It's cheap and quick. And if the cliff or ledge is high enough, you don't ever have to worry about cleaning up. Although I wouldn't do it in a pit like the Spartans. That would just fill up too quickly. And no shot that was the first time that Leonidas kicked a dude in the pit, let's be honest. Is there someone who empties the hole later? Clips are just easier. Just, just easier. Number 8, Ear Infections. Okay, not exactly a punishment, but it could be a punishment from up above. Hear me out. Not exactly sure who did this to the Neanderthals. Maybe it was God, maybe it was evolution, maybe it was something else. But the Neanderthals were cursed with something that I don't ever want to experience again. Shout out to the people who don't want to put their head underwater because after about 5 hours, the bonfire on the beach isn't so fun with your friends because you have an ear infection. Yes, that's right, ear infections. I'm sure I just described someone's least favorite summer night. Well, according to a study in 2019, ear infections were common in Neanderthals and may have ruined many meals by the fireside. While humans like us eventually grow out of them due to our ears' insides growing larger as we grow older, the inside of Neanderthals' ears stayed small and were a perfect place for bacteria. And like most folks, you're not you when you're hungry. You're also not you if you can't hear the arctic monkeys playing by the bonfire because of a really bad ear infection. Honestly, if you ever had one, I'm just sorry. Number 7. Axes the Neolithic period, also referred to as the New Stone Age, introduced us to many vital tools that we still use today. Like an axe, for example. Around 10,000 BC, Neanderthals moved from being these small hunter-gatherer type groups to these much larger settlements. In order to do so, you had to clear a lot of land. Humans evolved at this point in history because that's when we went from flaking stones to grinding them down entirely. We put a little more elbow grease in in order to clear those trees out to build a settlement or two or three or five. Neolithic axes were found at sites in England and Denmark. This one here was found in great condition, alarmingly great condition, like look at this thing. It was uncovered during archaeological surveys for a tunnel project in Denmark. Imagine finding a 5,500 year old axe in the middle of your shift. And in case you're wondering, the lack of oxygen in the surrounding clay is the reason why the wooden handle was preserved so well. It almost seems like it was placed there as some type of offering. My first thought is that it's for sure belonging to the Odin Thor family. I don't know. It's, it's placed downwards, you know what I mean? No one touch it. Number six, spears and arrows. Perhaps one of the most vital inventions, one we for sure still use today, always, of course. Arrows and spears were a necessity when it came to hunting, and for people in the Stone Age, all they needed really was wood. They would carve a leaf shape at the end or a triangle at the tip, and then they were mainly used by riders or barefoot hunters. But when it came to hunting, you didn't want to get too close to your prey, or else the wrong team could be claiming victory and eat the other for lunch. You get what I'm saying? So their solution was to huck these spears instead, or make really tiny ones that you can throw or shoot. The oldest bows in history are from 9000 BC. They're the home guard bows. They're found in Northern Europe all the way back from the Mesolithic period. The oldest spears, however, they come from Germany around 400,000 years ago, and they're actually the oldest wooden artifacts ever in history. Imagine being the first person to make a spear. Forget iPhones, a spear? That's a big deal. Number five, flutes. We love a solid flutist. They're flutists, right? Flutest? Uh, <laughs> dude, I've always wanted to play the flute. Pied Piper, that guy is daring. That guy is wild. He runs around town and plays the jazz flute all day long in tights. Of course I want to be like that. Mostly, he's got some flaws. But who is the first person to bust out We Three Kings? Who do we have to blame for all those horrible recorder classes in elementary school? Always the one kid next to you, you're like, drain the spit, it's not on properly. Cover your... 
Use that pinky, cover your thing up. The first instrument known to man was most likely our vocal cords, but the second instrument were the flutes of Glycin Costral Cave. They're the oldest musical instruments that have ever been discovered. They were made from bird bone and the ivory of a mammoth. Yeah, so that's an indication how old they are. They made music out of mammoth ivory. That's old. Brass? Like, no, 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 we haven't found that yet. Number four, paintings. Yeah, why not? Let's include art into this mix. Who was the first person to create art? The Lascaux Caves have been dubbed the prehistoric Sistine Chapel. These cave paintings are from 17,000 years ago and they're beautiful. But if you're thinking about sneaking down there to write Jordan was here, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels and sweat from visitors and just people breathing and being around, it was closed in 1963. You can't be breathing on our prehistoric paintings. Get your morning dad breath out of here, sir. We don't want that. Look how beautiful it is. It's really nice. <sighs> Learning about our history is challenging, but it's slowly fading away. We're breathing on it all day long. But these caves in France are not home to the oldest paintings in the world, believe it or not. Altamira Cave in Spain houses cave paintings from 35,000 years ago. The paintings were in such great condition that at first scientists doubted that they were the real deal from that long ago. But in 1902, they were marked as the real deal. These ochre and charcoal images are the most well-preserved on the planet. Meanwhile, I'm over here still drawing the sun in the corner of my page. Number three, the brazen bull. This might be the oldest punishment on the books. It also may be the worst. Seriously, this, this one's the worst. Similar to boiling in oil, however, this is just, just much worse. The brazen bull, basically what you got here is a bull made of bronze, and she's hollowed out like one of those walker things from Star Wars, all the little stormtroopers in it. So you put the perpetrators inside, you lock them in, and then you start a fire underneath that would essentially cook your perps to well done. Make sure your perps are well oiled and salted. Keep on high heat until the screaming stops or the desired sin has been cooked away. Yeah, I can't even begin to imagine the horrible feeling that would be locked inside there. No amount of aloe vera could ever fix those burns. Number two, dishonored burial. You are born, you live, and then you pass away. That's life. You gotta make the best of it. And at the very end, the least you can hope for is that the people will love you and give you the proper send off that you deserve. This was a serious deal for those in the olden times. Every culture from every corner of the world has some sort of burial and ritual rites. However, imagine if you were the tribe's disgrace. Perhaps you ate all their food or never contributed to the tribe. Maybe you're the reason why my favorite VHS tape went missing. Well, sir or madam, for your crimes and disrespect against this tribe, when you pass on, you will not receive the proper burial rites. There's been a few cases of remains dug up different from others, which begs the question, what did the person do to deserve such dishonors? And what did they do with my favorite VHS tape? Number one, banishment. Hello darkness, my old friend. In the same way that most teenagers across the country feel when they discover hair dye, punk rock, and feelings, is probably the same way Neanderthals feel when they were banished from their homes. A simple plan, really. Non-violent, but quite effective. As you walked along the boulevard of broken dreams, you'd be searching for a new home in the brutal, cold, and scary world that was ye olde times. Not even your offspring will know you, as you may never return. Besides, you're in too deep, and you're trying to keep yourself alive with anything that you can find. The all-American rejected teenagers do this kind of isolation from the comfort of their warm, isolated bedrooms that are paid for by loving parents. The Neanderthals were serious, as leaving the safety of your numbers had many disadvantages. Not being eaten by a predator, for one. Stay strong, kids. Stay strong. Number 10, Valentine's Day. While we don't exactly know for sure when and where the Neanderthals got around to, meaning besides being called a Neanderthal, they just don't exist anymore. However, one thing we do know for sure is that they left a little something to remember them by. If you could see what your DNA was made of, not that any of you have the equipment at home to do that, but if you do, that's really sick. But if you looked into your DNA, you might find some cave dwellers in there. And no, I'm not talking about boogers. That's a joke with inside a joke and then another joke. I'm out of breath. That's right, we share DNA with the Neanderthals. Why is that? Well, way back before MTV had a throwback Thursdays, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals might have been doing like they did on the Discovery Channel, if you catch my drift. Oh yes, that's right. We saw those large foreheads and said, champagne back in my cave? Where the devil's dance on the bed sheets commenced. Park the car in the garage. Mary had a little lamb. Not sure if that last one was a euphemism for the deed, but uh, ah, heck, I'm gonna run with it. I wonder whose else DNA we share. Hmm. Number nine, paintings of Magura Cave. 
Located in a cave in what is now Bulgaria, you will find something interesting. No, not stockpiled Soviet weapons prepping for the coming conflict that's looming over Eastern Europe, but cave paintings. I find these really fascinating actually. Basically, some Neanderthals were feeling artsy one night, probably after shacking up with some weird people with smaller foreheads, and decided to paint on the walls and possibly even tell a story. The paintings depict men and women hunting animals and dancing around the fire. It is estimated to be between 4,000 to 8,000 years old. Obviously, we can't be 100% sure of who done it, but still, cool nonetheless. I always like to see it as those paintings are older than everything and have seen everything. Like when we were discovering flight, those paintings were just big chilling. And that's a weird way for me to think about things, but I don't know, it's kind of weird to think those paintings have been there for that long. It's crazy. Number eight. Bury the unliving. A tradition practiced all over the world and by pretty much everyone is when somebody croaks, you give them a nice place to rest in the ground. However, it makes you wonder where the origins of this practice came from. Who was the first humanoid to go? Hmm, yes, dirt nap. Perhaps it was the Neanderthals, as some studies suggest that Neanderthals were burying their deceased and even marking graves with flowers, just like we do today. Doubt they poured one out for the boys, but still, pretty cool to think that the homeboys were getting some gangster flowers at their funeral. That's something Guy Fieri would say, right? Nothing tougher than a bouquet of yellow lilies with baby's breath. Yeah, that's right, I know flowers and stuff. I used to work in a garden. That's about all the info I actually know on botanicals. I'm sorry for yelling, I apologize. Number seven. Stick. This should come as no surprise, but a lot of problems or punishments were probably dealt with in the almighty stick. Cheap, somewhat effective, and in good supply. There's tons of expression for who's got the bigger stick, but like General Shepard from Modern Warfare 2 said, it also depends on who's swinging it. We'll never really know who was the first human-like creature to pick up a stick and wave it, but what we do know is that sticks are a part of everyday life, like tools and hunting. The sticks can also make for an excellent punishment delivering device. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names can never hurt me. Well, maybe sometimes. Honestly, the only time I've ever been really hurt is when the world lost Harambe. Rest in peace, you silverback angel. <sighs> Life's never been the same since. Number six, rock. And you smell what the rock is cooking. Man, I miss the old rock. I miss the WWE. Those were just good times, weren't they? Stone Cold too, what a great guy. Speaking of rocks. Probably the next best thing to a stick is a rock. Probably even cheaper and more plentiful than sticks. All kinds of punishments can be derived from rocks. Simple techniques such as having the tribe fill baskets full of rocks and then throw them at you until you're seeing stars or just ceasing to exist. Or in a similar situation, throwing someone off of a cliff, take a semi-large rock and drop it from a large height on top of somebody's head. Methods are different, however, it usually ends up in the same results. Just wait till they find out what kind of minerals and ores are hiding in those rocks. Oh, the discovery of metal and metalworking. Number five, good soup. Perhaps we'll never know where any of these punishments truly come from, but like all things, they had to come from somewhere. Maybe they did come from Neanderthals. What I'm talking about here is boiling people alive in oil. Ah, the good old days, which honestly sounds like the worst way to go. I, it just can't be nice. A practice that yet again was done all over. Giving people the lobster treatment must have been the worst looking, the worst sounding, and the worst smelling way to unalive someone. I happen to be a lover of theater, but man, this is a little too much. It's hard to call this anything but theatrics, as I'm sure there were much easier ways to achieve uh, certain goals. Honestly, you could probably cough on someone and would achieve the same result. Boy, am I thankful for sanitation. Number four, sacrifice. When your source of food gets taken away and then the rain doesn't stop for six days and six nights, and when your favorite VHS no longer works, it can truly only be an act of God. We have to please him, said a bunch of ooga booga men around the campfire. But how do we do this? Well, that's usually when the quiet person in the back speaks up. Sacrifice someone to the gods, he says. All right, sounds good to me. This was something that went on in many cultures around the world, but it makes you wonder who really was the first to try it, or rather keep trying it. I mean, hey, the buffalo came back, the rain stopped, and I just found my favorite VHS. Dude, we gotta sacrifice more people. Number three, red-haired artists. Due to their location and environment, some scientists suggest that Neanderthals had fair or pale skin with reddish hair. Just like that weird kid at the back of every class who after watching any hip hop movie, decided to download that persona. 
and when given the chance to present a project in class, it went something like this. Hearing Neanderthal standing in a tall mall bathroom stall with lemon halls with a basketball, starting to speech with a sudden draw about to crawl the space into a porcelain bra box and Barbie doll. Yeah, you know the guy. It sounded something like that. While perhaps not as creative as the modern day SoundCloud rapper, Neanderthal still had a knack for art and valuables. As oftentimes, crow's feathers and bones are found with their fossils, as well as some other niche collectibles. Maybe the urge to collect things has always been with us. This would explain why catching every single Pokemon is so addicting. Number 2. Cold Feet Neanderthals got to share the lovely human experience that is cold weather environments. Sure, they didn't have to shovel their driveways out every winter morning before work, but they also didn't have heated blankets, so it's kind of a trade-off. There's some evidence to suggest that Neanderthals weren't just walking around with their two meat and veg flopping about, as they would fashion clothing from animal hides. If animal hides and guts can keep Luke Skywalker warm on Hoth, then it could work out for our highbrow friends. Temperatures estimated to be in the negative 30 degrees Celsius range, the clothes were simple, loose fitting. For the chest, almost like a fur poncho. Kinda sick. They may have even made some makeshift shoes, because stepping in freezing snow without shoes sounds just awful. Imagine just always having wet, cold feet. I can imagine how that would stink up a cave, something awful too. Ooh, that'd be bad. Everyone just getting their big stinky hobbit feet out? Oh, no thank you. Number one, taking care of the elderly. When grandma gets a little bit older, sometimes she needs a little bit of extra help. Your bones just don't work the same when you're 75 compared to 25. Neanderthals were decent folk and helped their elderly. Elderly being close to late 30s because truth be told, you ain't got much time back then. One fossil found suggested that after losing a limb early in life, this person was taken care of. Well, that's really sweet. Well, to balance out all that sweetness, sometimes Neanderthals practice cannibalism. And, you know, Uncle Jerry's been sitting there and, well, I just can't help but think how, how hungry I am and there's no food in the cave and, well, he's starting to look like a delicious hamburger. <laughs> Nice. Number 10, extinction. Neanderthal history dates back to around 430,000 years ago. We've always thought that their extinction was caused by some sort of event, some catastrophic wipeout of some sorts, you name it. And we're trying to pinpoint it every day. Not every day, but you get it. There's a new Netflix documentary called Ancient Apocalypse where Graham Hancock explains this very event. What wiped out early humans? And rather, what's left of them? Very recently, a human tooth was discovered in a cave in southern France. Now, this tooth in question is from 54,000 years ago. Now, up until this point, we always thought Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago when modern humans started to roll in. But this new discovery could mean that the two species may have coexisted at the same time. Imagine that, you're going to work, you see a Neanderthal, you're like, hey, what's up? This is an odd 10,000 years, cool. Did modern humans wipe out Neanderthals? Maybe, I mean, probably. Are Homo sapiens to blame for the extinction of Neanderthals? That would be crazy, imagine that. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, hey, hit that thumbs up button, cheers. Species are wiping out each other, this is crazy. Number nine, craftsmen. It doesn't matter how far back you go, art will always be around in some way, shape, or form. Literally, Neanderthal craftsmen would carry with them a pouch and it would basically be a vandalism pouch. They could just go around and draw anything they wanted. And inside of it, it includes lithic flakes, sharp rock flakes basically to cut anything at any time. You had with them scrapers as well, which would be used to cut animal meat or carve wood. Pressure tools were also in there as well to sharpen said other tools. Just the first ever tool belt, essentially. Now, Neanderthals would use hard rock napping and use striking techniques, and sometimes they would carve art. Neanderthal carvings were discovered in Unicorn Cave over in Germany recently. Archaeologists found 50,000-year-old deer bone with patterns carved into it with said tools. So either these guys were bored or they were expressing themselves via art. Number eight. Food supply. Hunting looks challenging today, let alone thousands of years ago. I'm sure a crossbow helps, but back then, not so easy. Neanderthals would of course have to hunt in order to eat and survive, but just what did they eat? Hardened tartar hinted at their diet, and that diet being mussels, dolphin, seal, and tons of plants. Now this came to light after part of a seal's jaw was discovered in a vanguard cave in Gibraltar. Now the jaw in question had man-made cut marks, marks from tools that I mentioned earlier. So now we have a full picture. Now we can put a date on it. Number seven, through the fire and the flames. 
Homo sapiens were not the only bipedal rock stars to have harnessed the hot, burning power of fire. One study around Neanderthal sites found evidence of combustion. They found burned bones, heated stones, and charcoal. Fire is important. No, not just for cuddling bedside in a thick blanket as the fire roars, or a fire on Christmas morning to be honest, because you can't have Christmas morning without a fire. But perhaps most important is that fire cooks food. Imagine the Neanderthal's reaction when he roasted a hunk of meat over the fire and took a taste of that sweet meat. Man, now I want a steak all of a sudden. A purpose you might not have thought of, however, was creating tools. Pitch was used as glue to bind stone tools. The pitch was made through burning tree bark. This all sounds so cool, and honestly, as a dude, I just want to go get a bunch of my friends together and try to make some stone tools. But I know it'll end up being a gong show, and someone will end up on fire. That's just, someone will get hurt. That's how it goes. Number six, hunters. Cooking shmeat on the fire is important. And sorry, vegans, but it's just how it went. But Neanderthals can't just take a nice stroll into Whole Foods and pick something up at the meat counter. They had to work for it. Imagine how difficult it is to hunt an animal with stone weapons. Seriously. Obviously, there's no guns, but there's no steel either. Like a man stuck in a 10-foot hole with an 8-foot ladder, they needed a little help. Hunting required multiple hunters to effectively track and take their target, especially if it was a big bad woolly mammoth. I don't even know how you'd kill one of those with a stone tool. But there's evidence that suggests that the Neanderthals had knowledge of advanced hunting techniques and may have been aware of reindeer migration patterns and move with them. I respect the people who came before me and their hard work, but gathering food for us is hard too. I mean, you gotta get out of bed, then you gotta go to the store and line up. And oh, have you seen the price of bacon lately? All right, now that's tough. That's really tough. Number five, Call of Duty squeakers. Every young man in their lives has been through this cycle. Well, two if we're talking Call of Duty. Not pleased with the current game, hype builds for the next. You play the next, have fun and then it's no longer fun. And thus, the Call of Duty cycle is complete. Now, if you've been around the Call of Duty as much as I have, then you probably were playing much younger than the ESRB would have recommended for you. And that means young men with voices that are a few octaves higher than normal. Call of Duty being the friendly environment that it is, you got made fun of for it. Play long enough though, and you become the villain, where you now make fun of those who've yet to reach the desired octaves. Well, what if I told you that Neanderthals wouldn't fare too well in a Modern Warfare 2 lobby? I know, right? Who would have thought? As their voices were high-pitched. Yeah, that's right. Judging from their shape of their throats and chest, it's speculated that their voices would have had them put their mics on mute in order to avoid such ridicule. Can you imagine a bunch of Ooga Booga men like, Ooga Booga, Ooga Booga. That's what they sound like. That's crazy. Number four, the rule of two. Despite being large-browed, tough creatures with apparent high-pitched voices during the Ooga Booga around the fire, this was not enough to stop the almighty, the all-powerful Mother Nature. Based on the ecological rule that two species cannot occupy the same niche at the same time, Homo sapiens began to come out on top. It's almost like nature follows the same kind of rules that a certain hooded Sith follows. Do it, yes. I'm back, Palpatine. Somehow I have returned. Anyway, all Palpatine references aside, no one is 100% certain why the Neanderthals went the way of the dodo. However, you can imagine if they were still around today, I'm sure they would be welcomed with open arms. Not ostracized for looking or sounding different because we're humans and we've never done a bad thing ever, like once, not even once ever. We would treat everyone, we love everyone. That's why we're awful people. Finally, number one, glass. Imagine making glass, imagine being like, oh yeah, my dad makes glass. I don't know, he's a magician, I guess. Imagine making glass for the first time, you know what I mean? Like, you're a wizard. Even if you made glass now, I would think you're a wizard. Glass blowing shows on Netflix. I'm like, you're all wizards. How do you do this? Glass that was naturally occurring, like obsidian, for example, that was around and used during the Stone Age. Man-made glass was first used around 6,000 years ago. Archaeologists are pitting Lebanon, North Syria, ancient Egypt, all as the birthplace of synthetic glass. The first use of man-made glass were beads. Yeah, imagine being the first person to rock beads. Ah, oh, the confidence. A bead door, an ancient bead door? You would be a genius. Mid 2000s BC, a guy glazes up some beads. What an icon. Like I said, art comes in many different shapes and sizes. Number nine, glass. Imagine making glass for the first time. You would have thought you were a wizard for sure. I watch glass blowing shows now and it looks like wizardry. Wizardry in 4K. Glass blowing is nuts. They're just like, and it's just like a vase all of a sudden. You're like, how did he do that? That's so hot. 
Glass that was naturally occurring, like obsidian for example, that was around and used during the Stone Age. Man-made glass was first used around 6,000 years ago. Man-made glass, yeah, let's talk about it. Archaeologists are pinning Lebanon, North Syria, and ancient Egypt as the birthplace of synthetic glass. The first use of man-made glass were beads, believe it or not. Imagine being the first person to rock beads. Ah, oh, the confidence. Mid-2000 BC, guy decides to glaze up some beads. What an icon. Now we get to do this. The beads, it's a cool door. Number eight, sharpen stones. Some of the oldest tools in history could be laying in front of you and you would have zero idea. You have no clue. Coming from the shores of Lake Tucana in Kenya, these stone tools date back to around three million years ago. Yeah, these are predating the tools before that I mentioned by like 700,000 years. They seem to predate humans in the Homo genus as well, so that's interesting, that's kind of concerning. The volcanic ash and minerals around these sharpened stones date back that far, millions of years old. Stones in history can get a little dirty, to say the least. Not all these ideas that involve stones or sharpened stones are the best. French anthropologist Philippe Charlier shared toilet hygiene history in the British Medical Journal. Perhaps one of the most intriguing parts explains how these flat terracotta discs were found in ancient Greek sites and they had residue on them. They had a certain residue on these sharp rocks. They used to with these stones, yeah. They also discovered a Greek cup which said three stones are enough to wipe one's arse. Three? I don't know, that's at least five, my friend. Greeks would use stones to wipe. Never take the go for granted ever again. Number seven, the Pit of Bones. Ah, the Pit of Bones, classic, great name. Located in Northern Spain. Yeah, first of all, what a horrible, scary name that is. Imagine pitching this to the wife for a family trip. Yeah, we're going to the Pit of Bones. Grab your sandals, it's gonna be great. Since 1976, well over 6,000 human fossils have been collected from the Pit of Bones. They found around 28 individual Neanderthals in total. So maybe the Pit of Bones is actually a great name after all. Kind of nails it, I guess. The skeletons date back to around 430,000 years ago. Now in terms of facial features, these are for sure Neanderthals. We can confirm them. Neanderthal lineage confirmed. Very old, that's so old. I can't even imagine. Number five. Medicine. You can only imagine the various injuries Neanderthals would have, right? Hunting down a mammoth or a bison three times the size of you, yeah, odds are you're gonna get a bruise or two. More than fair. So what did Neanderthals do at this point? Is that what the pile of bones is for? I'm starting to connect this, that makes more sense. God, that's dark. How did Neanderthals live for so long without a pharmacy, right? All that yelling, no halls. Are you kidding? My throat hurts doing this list already. Neanderthal medical skills are pretty similar to what our ancestors did. Herbal remedies, that's it, right? It changes your life. They manage fevers, but when the pain got too bad, chewing on a specific tree may have helped tolerate all that pain. Yeah, 4,000 years before penicillin, Neanderthals were chewing on aspirin. Number four, forbidden friends. Last caught cave paintings date back to some 17,000 years ago, and a lot of the art seen on the walls of the cave art that depicts animals. It's mostly pretty much all animals, it's beautiful. About 900 of them, with just over 600 being recently identifiable. There are cattle, bison, some wild cats, bears, birds, you name it, but there are no reindeer at all. What happened, right? Did they just forget about this one specific animal out of 900, although they ate reindeer meat almost every day? Well, it took a long time to realize, but our best guess as to why they were missing from all these works of art is because these animals are ones that they never caught. Yeah, these are animals that they would dream about, right? They were always afar, just running away. They could never hunt or catch them because at this time they were too fast or too strong. Plus at this time, they didn't have certain weapons or tools available yet. More than fair, I would much rather draw a bison than have to tackle one, you know what I mean? Number two, the wheel. One of the greatest inventions of all time and now all we want is hover cars. How disrespectful, we just got this thing. The wheel, the idea of the wheel is unlike any other. See, most inventors are inspired by nature. Planes, submarines, bullet trains, all has something to do with nature, bird beaks, flying, underwater, all that crap. Nothing in nature resembles a wheel at all. The closest thing really are tumbleweeds and dung beetles. My favorite thing to mention on this uh, channel, the poop rollers. Potter wheels were found from Mesopotamia around 5,500 years ago. Now it's hard to pinpoint who used the wheel first and where, I mean, given the fact that it was that long ago, but the front runners so far aside from Mesopotamia are the Tripoli people of modern Ukraine because the word wheel literally is derived from their language, but the wheelbarrow may have appeared in ancient Greece around 600 BCE. They say you can't reinvent the wheel, but I feel like you can, at least this early in time, I feel like we did. Yeah.